Hi everybody, and welcome back to Lost Genre Let's Not Meet, where we take a look at stories that are thrilling and will keep you on the edge of your seat. And these are the sort of situations that you do not want happening to you. So without any more introduction, let's go ahead and start it with the first story. This first one is from user Deleted. When I was 19, in the early 90s, my brother and his wife were newly married and living in Baltimore. I was from Maryland, but had not yet spent any time in that city. I knew it wasn't totally safe in parts, but I also knew that I was just going straight to my brother and sister-in-law's house, so it would be fine. Until I turned onto the wrong street. This was Martin Luther King Boulevard, and back then it was a stretch of abandoned gas stations, sketchy bars, boarded up houses. A few people were walking in the middle of the street drinking out of paper bags. I knew that I had messed up, and instead of freaking out and getting more lost, I pulled into an abandoned gas station. There was a bank of payphones and I parked about 10 feet from them, hopped out and called my brother. He wasn't patient at first because he knew the city quite well, but it was my first time driving in it and I was trying to write down his directions as he gave them to me. Just then, something caught my eye and I looked over at my car. Three men were leaning against it, two on the passenger side, one against the driver's side front door. They were all staring at me with their arms crossed. I started to silently cry, thankful that I had on sunglasses. My brother heard me sniffling and said, Why are you upset? I'm giving you directions. But I couldn't tell him what was going on, as the men were within earshot. I got the rest of the directions, put them in my pocket, and walked to my car. The man leaning against my door reached up and wiped the tears from one cheek. Then he said, Why are you crying, baby? Nothing bad has happened yet. Without even thinking about it, I responded, fully sobbing now. I just shot my boyfriend and I'm in a lot of trouble. The cops are... That's all I got out. The three men had all taken off in separate directions at full sprints away from me. If I hadn't been gifted with that lie from my guardian angel or whomever saved my butt that day, who knows what would have happened. Dudes, I no longer live in Maryland, but let's not meet. Wow, however she got the idea to just blurt out that lie actually I think saved her life. Definitely. That's a scary situation. You're, I mean, yeah, back then they didn't have cell phones so she couldn't have Google Maps or anything like that, so she needed directions. To see three guys leaning up against your car in a dodgy street, most definitely not a good thing. Thankfully that lie allowed her to leave unharmed. Alright, let's move on to the next story. This one is from user Dees94. I was 13 years old at the time, now 22, and on vacation with my parents in Turkey. We were in an all-inclusive hotel and enjoying the holiday. The hotel was full of tourists from different countries. There was this one guy, around 20, who was staring at me for some time. I felt uncomfortable and asked him how he was doing. Wrong choice. The next few days, everywhere where I was, he also suddenly appeared. Not flirting, just lurking for hours and watching me. He had a really strange vibe around him and I felt I shouldn't be alone with him. Now, I was still young, so my parents didn't want to leave me alone in a foreign country. So he could not bother me. But one night there was entertainment in the hotel, which became boring to me after some time. I told my parents I wanted to go to my hotel room and I would see them in the morning. I left and walked to the elevator. What I didn't know was that the guy who was watching me for days saw me leaving and he had followed me. When I saw him coming in, I was in great fear. He looked at me silently with a sinister smile. This is it, I thought. Assault, or maybe even worse. And just before the doors of the elevator were closing, someone stuck his foot between in order to prevent them from closing. I am not kidding. All I could see was a boot. The doors opened and it was my dad. He saw that the creepy guy was leaving at the exact time I had left and didn't trust it. He looked the guy in the eye and said, Hello. My dad took me to my hotel room. To this day, I am so glad for the rescue because I don't want to know what would have happened if he didn't. Yes, dad, way to go. 
As a parent, you keep an eye on your kids. Mom or dad, you're always aware of what's going on around your kids. In this case, I kind of think that dad just made the connection that as soon as his daughter started moving, this guy just gets up and starts walking in the same direction. I wouldn't trust that either and I would go with my girl to her hotel room and make sure she's safe. This dad didn't need a particular set of skills like Liam Neeson and Taken. He just needed a boot and being in the right place. All right, now let's move on to the main story. This one is from user running in circles 234. When I was 20 years old, so six years ago, I worked as a delivery girl for a pretty popular pizzeria in my area. Initially, I worked the late morning to mid afternoon shift. But when the guy who delivered for the night shift ended up getting fired due to him losing his license because of a DUI, I was placed on the night shift since my boss hired a family friend who could only work my shift for whatever reason. I really didn't want this shift because you never know if people who order late at night actually want a pizza or if they have other intentions in mind. Unfortunately, my boss was a butthole and essentially told me if I wasn't willing to work the night shift, I was fired. I wasn't exactly in a position where I could be out of work, albeit temporarily, so I reluctantly worked the shift. The first month of this shift went by without any issues, until I had to deliver a pizza to a house that just barely made our delivery radius. I punched it on my GPS and the house was located in a pretty suburban part of the city. I arrive and it's about 11 p.m. The block was extremely quiet, decently lit and mostly littered with modern townhouses. But the house I delivered to was a duplex. I ring the doorbell and wait for about 30 seconds. No answer. I ring it again and wait another 30 seconds. Still no answer. I'm standing there getting pretty nervous that something's about to go down, but thankfully a man opens the door. He looked like he was in his late 40s, he was pretty tall, maybe a little over 6 foot, and he was very skinny. I tell him his pizza's here and he just stands there staring at me. I asked him if he was okay and he responded by saying, Yeah yeah I'm fine, I got off work not too long ago and I'm zoning out a bit. Fair enough I suppose. He hands me the money, I hand him the pizza, and as I'm making change he says, You're really beautiful, you know that? Not really thinking too much into it, I thanked him for the compliment and gave him his change. I said goodnight, and he did too. I walked back to my car and finished my deliveries for the night. A few days later, I get a delivery order to the same place. I hit over there around the same time as last time and ring the doorbell. He answers the door very excitedly and said, Hey, it's you again! How are you? I told him I was tired and can't wait to go home, to which he chuckled and said, I know that feeling pretty well, as he was pulling out his wallet. As he's counting his money, he asks me what my name is. Being kinda tired at this point and not really thinking straight, I stupidly tell him my name. As I am making change, he asks if he could have my number as he'd love to hang out with someone as gorgeous as you. Whoa buddy, pump the brakes. I've literally only met this guy like twice to deliver a pizza. I had no idea who this guy was and I'm positive he barely knew who I was as well. Another thing to mention is that I looked way younger than I was at the time. I was told by numerous people that I still looked like I was 15 and I was hoping he thought differently and wasn't hitting on what he thought was a teenager. I'm just standing there awkwardly for a few seconds before I muster out, sorry, I have a boyfriend. He gets upset and says, oh, okay, I see. We stand there in silence before I tell him to have a good night and walk back to my car. He says nothing and still stands at the doorway staring at me until he finally went back inside once I started my car. I got a pretty creepy vibe from this guy and even brought it up to my co-workers and they agreed it was pretty creepy. Except for my boss who overheard everything and claimed I was making up stories to try to gain sympathy for having to take the shift. Freaking butthole. A week later, I'm working the night shift again and we get an order from the same guy again and this is when S finally hits the fan. 
I arrive at the house at around 10.30 p.m. and keep in mind that from my perspective on the road, it didn't look like a single light in that house was on. I get out of my car and I walk to the front door with the pizza box in my arms. As I'm approaching the door, it quickly swings open to reveal the man, except this time he was wearing a suit and I jumped back. He laughs and says, sorry if I scared you. I saw you out the window and figured I just opened the door now so that you wouldn't have to ring the doorbell. I was getting scared because, as I mentioned before, there were no lights on in the house. So was he sitting in the dark this whole time? And if so, why? I nervously laugh and say it's okay. He asked me if I liked his suit, to which I said yes. Then he asks me, Would you like to go on a date with me tonight? What the F? I once again tell him that I have a boyfriend, to which he chuckles, gets close to me and says, Honey, there's no way a girl your age is in a serious relationship. If you go on a date with me, I'll show you how a real man treats a girl. He grabs the pizza box from my hands and throws it to the side and grabs me by my arms hard. I'm officially essing bricks at this point and try not to cry from the fear that was overwhelming me. I start pleading with him, dude, please, I just want to go home. I don't want to go on a date tonight. He just stares at me with the most sinister look I've seen on someone's face and says, I don't care. Get inside now. We're gonna have a good time. He starts trying to pull me into the house and I'm trying to resist as hard as I can. After a bit of struggling, he lets go of one of my arms and starts grabbing something out of his pocket which I presumed was a knife. I did something that to this day I am still thankful worked as he was doing that. I used my free arm to punch him as hard as I could in his stomach. This stuns him for a few seconds and he loosened his grip on me, allowing me to break free. I quickly run to my car and as I get in, he runs at me and tries pulling me out of the car, holding the knife in the other arm and even yells, why are you making this so freaking difficult? I grab a half empty soda bottle I had in the cup holder and throw it and luckily it hits his head and he lets me go. I slam the door and then all of a sudden he jumps on the hood of my car and starts scratching and banging on my windshield with his knife. I put the car in reverse, quickly back out of the spot and drive in reverse down the road with him desperately trying to hold on. He's banging on my hood screaming, stop the effing car! I turn onto the next road as swiftly as possible and luckily he falls off the hood of my car. I slammed the gas as hard as I could to get as far away from that sick bastard as I could. In my panicked state, I drove a couple blocks down the street and kept making turn after turn onto other side blocks as I feared I was being followed. Eventually, I reached a red light and I slammed on the brakes and just sat at the intersection frozen from what had just happened. I began crying and violently shaking as I was sitting there. It dawned on me that I came so close to losing my life and I couldn't help but feel like I shouldn't have been alive. Once the light turned green, I pulled over to the side and just sat there crying. Eventually, I get the energy to drive back to the pizzeria and almost immediately after I walk in, my coworker knew something was wrong after seeing me. I practically broke down in front of him and everyone else came to the front wondering what was going on. I fought my tears and explained everything that had just happened. My co-worker comforted me and my boss surprised me and began apologizing profusely for what had happened and for putting me on the night shift. He took me into the office and handed me the phone to call the cops. They arrived at the store and I give them my statement. Also allowed them to take pictures of any marks on myself as well as scratches on my car from the encounter as evidence. My co-worker followed behind me as I drove home and I collapsed on my bed and strangely enough, I managed to fall asleep. I quit my job the next day and luckily a friend of mine managed to hook me up with a new job at her clothing store. As far as this psycho goes, two days later I received an update from the police. 
The entire duplex was owned by the guy's brother who lived on the right side with his wife and the psycho lived on the left side of the duplex. I learned that he had been in and out of jail constantly, at first for robberies and assaults, but later on it was for worse crimes. He had been released from jail about five months before this encounter for taking advantage of a minor. When they arrived at the house, he was long gone and his family had no idea where he ran off to, but the police insisted they would find him. And they did, albeit not alive. I spent the next two months in fear that he would find me and finish what he had in mind, but the police contacted me and updated me on the case. Apparently, he fled to another city nearby and attempted to kidnap a teenager walking alone late at night on the street. Luckily, somebody happened to be looking out the window at the right time, called the cops and the police caught him trying to force her into his car. He manages to flee and the police chase after him. He blew a red light near a busy boulevard and a van slammed right into the driver's side of his car. By some sort of miracle, the driver of the van only sustained minor injuries while the psycho succumbed to his wounds long before the ambulance even arrived. I thanked the officers for everything they did and for informing me and I walked out of the station. I walk down the street and I light up a cigarette as I'm taking in everything I had just been told. I don't wish death on people, but after hearing about his death, I felt relieved. I felt relieved that he couldn't hurt anyone anymore. I was relieved that I would never have to encounter him ever again and that I wouldn't have to go through with charging him and reliving what happened that night. Who knows where I'd be if he'd managed to pull me into his house. It would be an entirely different story if he'd managed to pull you into the house, but thankfully you managed to get away using that quick thinking of punching him in the stomach and then luckily you had that half empty soda bottle to hit him in the head. This is why I think it's so important for people to learn self-defense since they're children. It's one of the things I'm going to encourage my kids to do, to pick a martial art and to learn it, be it judo, taekwondo, Thai fighting, kickboxing, full contact, whichever you want, whichever teaches you to defend yourself. Not to become a bully, but to defend yourself. Additionally, a martial art can teach you discipline, courage, mental strength, focus, among other things. But that's just my personal opinion. Okay, we've reached the end of the video. So, if you did like it, go ahead and click like. If you like this kind of video and you still haven't joined the community, go ahead and click subscribe. And having said all that, I'll see you guys on the next video.